Hey, it's Eagle, and today I'll be going over all the new features introduced in Patch 30442. The most noticeable addition to the game is the introduction of flying units. While there have been air units for a while, this is the first time players are able to build and use them against each other. Three were introduced. First, the Hero, which is an aerial healer. It flies around to the nearest damaged unit and heals it while avoiding ground fire. It can even heal mechs. It can only be healed over an outpost, but can heal both ground and air units. Second is the Balloon, which is an aerial heavy mine. Although it is slow, it latches onto air mechs and explodes on contact while in the air. They deal a large amount of damage, but have a slow move speed and fairly small radius. Lastly is the Sky Eye. This is a radar node that lights up a large part of the minimap when it is placed. Overall, the new air units are still in their alpha stage, and there are lots more to come. This patch is just a test with support units to test their viability in PvP. Expect many more exciting updates to them in the future. The next big update is an add-on to the recently added pathing system. This patch introduces an auto-deploy feature. Basically, it allows units in your build queue to automatically be built and deployed without you having to pick them up at all. All you have to do is press N on the keyboard and the nearest outpost bunker will become a deploy station for your units. To delete the node, choose a different bunker or press the icon above the minimap. It is incorporated with the pathing system, so you can draw a path from the outpost bunker with the node on it, and your units will follow that path when deployed and be sent on the capture order. This allows much more versatile ground mech play. If you're in ground mode in a contested area and need units, you can just draw a path and start building. The next big thing is unit health bars and numbers in-game. Easily view the health of yours and the enemy's units by toggling them on in the Options tab. This feature allows you to quickly assess the health of your units and micro around the ones with the least health. It is also great for testing out numbers in solo. Another gameplay update is that build queues can now hold up to 6 units at a time. This is a fairly big update, so be sure to utilize it. Custom games now have more options. You can now once again enable hyper mode and set a pin so spectators are locked out of private games. Thanksgiving content is back with the familiar cosmetics such as Royal Turkey, Pumpkin Pie, and the Cornucopia. Two new cosmetics were added thanks to Serkin, a big investor in air mech. He inspired the Flying Loco, a new train that will follow your mech for just 800 diamonds. He also has his very own Black Diamond VIP pet, Serkin's Loco, which is the reward for Diamond VIP club card members. It is extremely rare, as only 500 exist in-game. Winter crates are now dropping at the end of games, so be sure to buy some keys and open them up. There are new Diamond Bundles available to purchase now. They have been simplified to award strictly Diamonds, but you still receive VIP for buying them, and they are still a great deal. More bundles will be coming soon with things such as gold VIP, rare capsules, and VIP tickets. As for bug fixes, there was a fix so necros won't resurrect mines and bear traps anymore. They also fixed an issue with some ground units not being able to fire at airborne air mechs in the last patch. And lastly, we have our balance changes brought to you by the newly inducted air mech council members. First off, the butcher had his hit points reduced to 450, from 500. And also, now all shots aimed at him will hit, so he has no dodging capability. The Bertha has a slower deploy speed, 20% slower. And the booster no longer drains energy when not moving, so if you're sitting still, you will keep the same amount of energy. There were also some general improvements for low-end and mid-tier computers, and now unit blast damage is shown on the unit info cards. It shows the damage number as well as the radius for units such as bombs and mines. That's all I have for this patch and I will see you later.